At every moment we are making decisions. We always have choices to make. These little little decisions we make determine the journey of our life. 15 years ago where were you? Think about it. And then you made some decisions. And those decisions determined where you are today. So what you are, where you are, what you do is all a consequence of the choices that you have made. And today too you have got choices before you. What is the meaning of success? It doesn't mean that we have to all become like similar. God has filled this world with infinite variety. So we are all unique individuals and that is why we are all precious to God. If your child says, "Papa, which of your children do you love the most?" you will say, "I love all of them." If I ask you which of your fingers do you love the most you will say I love them all I need each of them similarly each of us is irreplaceable each of us is unique and God loves us all even though we are different look at the variety in creation no two human beings have the same face they all look different Our biometrics are different. In fact, our bodily aromas are also different. The dog recognizes on the basis of the aroma. You'll remember by the face. He'll remember by the smell. This smell is in my file in my memory. In other words, each of us has got a different bodily aroma. that is the extent of the variety in this world so similarly each of us is unique but the principle applies we all need inwardly we are programmed to feel the best we can feel to be the best we can be and to do the best we can do so how then will we reach this goal think growth think progress now the problem is that many people say swami ji you know i did think i tried my best to change myself but it was so difficult i gave up many people have this complaint that i tried and i was did not succeed so i became disappointed on the other hand we've come across instances of people who completely transformed their lives how did they do it let's study their examples and see what worked for them it may work for us as well take a look at tulsidas goswami tulsidas the writer of the ram charit manas the hindi ramayan that ram charit manas which he has written is so scholarly if every time i read it i get astounded how could anybody write something like this it has got the from a literary perspective the best literary tools in the world from the scriptural perspective there are direct translations of upanishadic mantras from bhakti perspective it's an ocean this tulsi das ji he was not born as a saint in fact in his youth he was extremely attached to the world he was so attached that he could not think of living without his wife one day his wife had gone to her maika parents home but in the night tulsidas realized how can i be without her i need to meet her tonight so he set out to meet his wife unfortunately for him it was 
pouring that day but tulsidas was not one to be daunted when he wants to meet his wife rain is not going to stop him such was his attachment so he braved it all the way until he reached the river which was just before his in-laws home on that stormy night there was no boat willing to take him across but tulsidas would not accept no he found a piece of log floating by he said thank you god you are so kind he grabbed the log and he swam his way across then when he reached the other bank he put the log aside and he reached his in-laws home now the appropriate thing would have been to go to the front door and knock after all he is the son-in-law he has a legal right to be there however tulsidas was in such a hurry that he could not wait the time it would take for them to respond and open the door he knew that his wife would be on the floor above and from the window he saw a rope hanging down he said god is doubly kind to me so he grabbed the rope and climbed up and jumped in through the window here i am however his wife was not impressed on the other hand she was extremely annoyed she was shocked my dear husband where did you manifest from he said you know my love for you is so deep i had just had to meet you tonight the wife said but in this rainy night how did you cross the river he said you know god showed me the way i found a log floating by i grabbed it look there is the log she looked log that's a dead body it's a corpse were you so blind that you mistook a corpse to be a log what's wrong with you and how did you climb up he said you were so thoughtful you had hung a rope from your window for me to climb she said i did nothing of the sort which rope are you talking about she looked outside and there was a snake slithering there tulsidas's wife scolded him she berated him what kind of infatuation do you have you are so blinded by your love for this body made of pus blood stool urine mucus even though you have the knowledge of the scriptures if you had a fraction of this attachment for lord ram you would have become god realized that scolding which he gave to him tulsidas made a decision he said enough is enough he turned around from there and walked off he revised the knowledge of the scriptures he practiced devotion to awaken his best self and the consequence he became one of the most learned and devotional people in the last 5000 years so here we have somebody who was so low and he completely changed his life then why is it that you and i find it so difficult what was the key in his transformational journey the desire he decided no more that decision came about by his wife scolding whatever but the decision he made created a difference think about it at every moment we are making decisions we always have choices to make these little little decisions we make determine the journey of our life 15 years ago where were you think about it and then you made some decisions 
whether to become an engineer or a doctor, whether to stay in one country or the other country, to get married or not to get married or whatever. And those decisions determined where you are today. So what you are, where you are, what you do is all a consequence of the choices that you have made. And today too you have got choices before you. The biggest choice is in regard to time. Because time is a limited resource. Everybody only has 24 hours. What should I do with my time? Should I play video games? Or should I go to the Radha Krishna temple for darshan? Or should I gossip with my friends? The choice is always there. And as you keep choosing, that is how you keep becoming. So there are some choices that can be rectified. And there are some choices that cannot be rectified. Jerry Lewis and old timer comedian he said that the best gift I got was a picture of my wedding you know in those days the pictures used to have the celluloid so there would be these slides which would then move at 8 frames a second to create the moving effect so somebody took the picture and gave it to me he said, that is the best gift I've got because when I feel fed up and frustrated, I play it in reverse and feel I'm getting liberated. <laughs> he realizes that he's stuck. It's a choice he made. Now bear with it. But again, he's making a choice whether to laugh at it or to cry at it or to take some remedial action or to bear it. So the choices are always there. God has created us to love Him. And that is why He has given us a free will. Choose. What do we have between B and D is the letter C. Between birth and death, we have the choices we are making. Remember when you say yes to something, you say no to another. If you say yes, to your professional growth. You are saying no to family life. You are saying no to work-life balance. There are all these aspects in your life. You say yes here. You say no there. So what are the choices that you are making? One husband and wife. They went to the Grand Canyon. Now the husband was scared of heights. And the wife was fearless. So she was repeatedly going close to the edge. And he was telling her again and again, don't go so far. But she was not listening. She was feeling the thrill of the adrenaline. So finally he said, look, if you can't resist going so close, then give the sandwiches to me. In case you fall off, at least I'll have the sandwiches. So he's choosing the sandwiches over his wife. All the choices that we are making, remember the power of choice. So today the choices that you make, what do you choose to think? Do you choose to be miserable? Do you choose to be happy? Do you choose growth or do you choose contentment? That is all in, in your hands. So. As we choose, that is where we will find ourselves in the future.